Well, as we mentioned, um, there was a big game last night at Loftus. I was there for the Champions League with Sundowns advancing to the semi-finals. But in controversial fashion against Yanga of Tanzania at Loftus in Pretoria. The Brazilians progressing 3-2 on penalties after the match ended in a goalless draw. But not before Yanga were denied what they claim was a clear goal midway through the match. They've now written to Kev to complain. The decision sparked the debate over the fairness of the match and the competence of VAR. And to speak more about the game as well as this decision that we need clarity on, we are joined by Far Post journalist Mtoko Zisidube, as well as former FIFA referee and VAR instructor, by the way, Jerome Damon, a man who knows all about VAR and he will take us through what happened at Loftus last night. And we'll start with Jerome. Good evening from us, Mr. Ref. I hope you are well. Thank you for joining us on Sports Live tonight. Good evening. Yes, I am. it's cold in Cape Town, but it's, but it's good to be on your show. Great to have you here on the show. It's been a big talking point over the past 24 hours, whether it was a goal or not. Some say it was, some say it wasn't. But what we need clarity on, it was this, what is the process in determining if it was a legitimate goal? Because there was VAR in this match, and it seems like the referee um, did consult with VAR or was consulted by VAR. What is the process here, Jerome Damon? So um, with VAR, the, there's always a first decision. The first decision is the on-field decision. And so the on-field decision at the time was no goal. And so the VAR would then have to process. Okay, we're just going to try and reconnect Hello. there with referee Jerome Demon. We keep losing him a little bit there. And I think it's important we hear the conversation and everything that he has to say because no one knows VAR better than him as a VAR instructor. But also, a man who was at the game from far post, Mtoka Zisidube, joins us on the line to get his thoughts on the match at all. But you were there, Mtoko Zisi. I'll start with you. Good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening uh, and uh, good evening to the viewers. You were there last night from the naked eye. Did it look like a goal or not? Did it cross the line? Look, <laughs> I think is we, we've only had uh, a look at one angle, you know, of it, which which is obviously the the SAPC, uh, you know, uh, video. And from the from the naked eye, it looks like uh, the ball crossed the line. Uh, but I'm not too sure if probably the, the VAR would have shown different angles which would show something different. But but from where I'm standing, I'm so convinced that it, it did cross the line. Okay, Jerome Demon is back with us, a VAR instructor, and he was taking us through the process. Uh, Jerome, what is the process then? Because even the guy that was at the stadium is not sure. People have seen the replays, they also, some of them are not sure. Yeah, so, so can you hear me better now? Yes, we can hear you. Hello? Okay, great. So the, the, the first thing that would have happened was that there would have been an on-field decision. And the on-field decision was no goal. So then BAR would then be given all the angles available to check whether the on-field decision was obviously wrong. And that is the protocol of VAR to check if the on-field decision was obviously wrong, which means they would have gone through, if there were 32 cameras, they would have been given all 32 angles to go through to see which angle would be the best to overturn the on-field decision, much like um, much like in DRS in cricket, where the, um, where the umpires, where there's an umpire's call. Um, and so, they they had then concluded that there wasn't a conclusive angle because remember the law clearly states mm. that the whole of the ball must cross the goal line between the upright and and beneath the crossbar for it to be a goal now i don't know if you can remember uh, in the world in the recent world cup japan versus germany there was this big yes. controversy whether the japanese ball had, whether the ball had gone out across the goal line or not for all intents and purposes, us sitting at home, we thought, no, this ball is clearly out. Mm. But when the correct angle was shown, the top view angle, uh, we could see that there was a part of the ball that had not crossed the line. Now, as much as we could speculate to overturn an on-field decision, there needs to be conclusive evidence that the refereeing team on the field had got it completely wrong. And VAR, using all the technology available, concluded that they were not completely wrong. They can't say that they were completely correct, 
But because they did not have the angle to show that the entire ball had crossed the goal line, the on-field decision stood, which was no goal. What would have happened if the referee had given a goal then? And then uh, would they have gone to yes. bear out or would so that decision have stood? Correct. If the, if the on-field decision was goal and the same scenario played out, there was not a conclusive angle, the on-field decision would have stood as goal because the refereeing team was not obviously wrong. And so they acted, the refereeing team and the VAR acted within the protocol, which is available uh, to them by, by checking all the, all the available angles. I'm sure the way we had trained them, they would have also tried to use the offside line um, and the offside technology to see if the, all of the ball had crossed. Now, the only technology which would have been conclusive is the it's the other part of football which we, which we have is called the goal line technology. Now, in world competition, in FIFA competition, we use goal line technology and we use VAR concurrently for this precise situation because FIFA, mm. because FIFA and the IFAB know that um, that uh, goal line technology will be most accurate in the situation. Okay, goal line technology not available last night at Loftus and uh, Jerome Demon, a VAR instructor and former FIFA and CAF referee, giving us more clarity about what happened. But on the field of play, though, um, Togozi Sidube, some of the Sundown supporters were not too convinced by the performance um, over the two legs against Yanga. Does it matter or should they just be happy that they've advanced to the semi finals now? Look, I think it's it's it should be a cause for concern. I mean, um, having played these two legs and failed to to score a single goal, you know, in those two legs, uh, I mean, uh, they would be waiting to see if they are going to play Esperanza or Asik, uh, which you know is is obviously going to be a bit more difficult, um, you know, than young Africans uh, who were in, in at this stage of the of of this competition for the first time. So I think. It, it, it does make sense that they would be concerned because they didn't really play well. They didn't dominate as they usually do. They didn't create too many chances in both legs. I actually felt young Africans had more chances. Of course, sometimes had more possession in both legs. But in terms of creating clear-cut chances, I feel sometimes were, I mean, uh, young Africans had more clear-cut chances, you know. So had they taken the chances, it could be a different story. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword because in previous seasons they've played good football and not advanced and now they're doing it the hard way and they have advanced. And the other big question, Togo Zisi, has been because of the depth of the Sundown squad, yeah. some believe that if they don't go all the way and win the CAF Champions League, the season will be considered a failure. Do you agree with that considering that they're dominant here at home and they've already won the AFL? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, look, um, I mean... Uh, to, to whom much is given, much is required. You know, there is a demand to to obviously um, win this uh, particular competition, which is the CAF Champions League. Um, if 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 they don't win it, I mean, it's it's the one competition that has been eluding them for you know for 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 the last uh, you know eight years. I think having last won it in in 2016. So if they don't win it, it's 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 not good enough. I mean, considering the amount of uh, investment that has gone into the team. I don't think too many uh, teams, you know, also on the continent have invested as much as, as they have in their squads. And except maybe for teams like your, your al in, in in Egypt who, who are also still in this competition. So it would definitely not be good enough if, if they don't win uh, uh, the CAF Champions League this time around. Okay, to whom much is given, much is tested, then Sundowns being victims of their own success, expectations always high at the Brazilians, and I think the coaching staff and the players are well aware of that, and they have embraced that. We're going to have to leave the conversation there, but thank you, um, Jerome Damon, for joining us. It's been a pleasure hearing you. I saw also you on social media giving clarity there, and we really appreciate it in situations like this. And also, thank you to Mtogo Zisidube from Far Post. We're